Hello everyone, welcome back to Marion's World. I've got a really lovely page to share with you today. Um, when I first started my bird book, I thought I wrote down a whole list of birds that I would really like to stitch and they included barn owls and kingfishers and um, lapwings and all sorts of the most lovely British birds. But the value of doing something over a length of time when your ideas formulate and change and you think about things more. Um, it's migrated into just the birds that I see in my own garden. And I have bird feeders at the front of the house that my husband looked after and he loved all the little garden birds. And so today's page is one of the most overlooked little birds, a little house sparrow. I see them on my feeders every day and I decided I'd give the little house sparrow a little bit of stitchery love. I'm going to sit here with my cup of tea and while you enjoy it, hopefully, and I'd love to see what your comments are later on. Please, please press the like button. I hope you all like it as much as I do. And subscribe if you want to see what other little birds I see in my garden, because they're definitely going to form the last few pages of my bird book. Thanks everyone. I've got a photograph here that I've downloaded from the internet and I just love how they're a lot more bonny than just the LBJs or little brown jobs that people say they are. And I know they're really common but when I look out on, on the bird feeders they, they're the birds that I see coming from the hedge and, and fluttering around on the ground eating the seed. And so because I kept thinking of them eating all the seeds, I decided that I would actually do something a bit different from normal. And so I've actually drawn, I don't know whether you can see it there, but I've drawn a picture of the bird there, but he's sitting on a bird feeder. And the bird feeder's going to go, I'm not going to fill the bird feeder with the seeds. Because that's how I see the little bird. And I thought I'd do more of a slow stitched bird today. So he is going to go into my small hoop. Uh, so I can work on and I am going to use instead of embroidery threads I'm going to use some cruel wool today so I have a mixture of cruel wools I've picked out the colours that I thought I would use the most so these Appleton wools are ones I've bought when I've done tapestry when I've done tapestry cushions and I wanted a particular colour these pen old Penelope ones are thrifted that I've found in various places or got from got from places so they're vintage um but I'll have bought them and then these ones here these twists are really really old and these came to me in a big I've got a big pile of them these will be very old indeed and they came with a half done um cruel work fire screen picture that I still haven't done anything with and actually it's something that I do want to finish. So these came I think from my great grandma to my mum to me. My mum never did anything on it. I haven't done anything so far but I do have the cruel work design and I've got the wools that came with it. So that's what I'm going to use for threads. Then for the bird I'm going to layer up some fabrics. And so I've picked out some likely candidates. I've got this lovely bit of rust dyed cotton and I thought the colours went perfectly with what's on his wing and his head. I've got this lovely piece of fabric here which was layered in my solar jar and actually the grey has come from the meadow cranes bills that i've just done in my flower book i layered cranes bills up with some other um, herbaceous leaves and things and left it for three months and this grey has come from that and i just thought that was perfect for his tummy straw is where i keep well when the children's backpacks got wrecked and they needed a new backpack I used to like take all the useful things off, so the straps, the cords, the anything that was deemed useful. And in here are pieces of net 
um, from that have been making the little side pockets. So I thought actually that some of that could maybe layer up to make the wire feeder. So that's my setup. I've got the shapes nicely cut out now. So I've taken a bit of that uh, geranium dyed grey and just roughly cut out the head shape. I've got this lovely piece of rusty fabric which I'm going to put on there for the way his colours come and another piece of grey which will end up being his throat. So I'm going to just start and stitch these initial pieces of fabric down not necessarily trying to do the proper embroidery yet but I need the fabric to be stitched down and so I'm just going to make some stitches that keep this where I want it to be. Just going to make sure that's over my outline. I'll just do some nice little stitches. I can always go back and alter, add extra embroidery as I like, but initially I just need to be able to create the shape by layering up the fabrics. Well again I'm on my smallest hoop that I've got which will work fine. Okay I'm going to leave this thread attached because I don't want to keep cutting my thread if I don't need to but I need another colour so I'll leave that one on. I thought it might be easier to actually cut out all of my shapes first and then just stitch them on very loosely with a bit of um, sewing cotton. And so I've got this nice wing shape. The tails come out of some old um, curtain fabric that had paint on. I've cut the wing out of the lovely rust dyed fabric. And the tummies come out of the grey solar dyed. Things. So I am just actually going to stitch on with this grey cotton. I'm taking note of where things are going to be but I'm not trying to embroider at the moment. I just want it to be held down so that I can actually do the stitching. Otherwise they're just waggling about too much. I really like the colours that this has dyed out and this with the little bit of yellow on there which I think was maybe from turmeric um, actually it's just lovely for his tummy because on the photograph I can actually see a yellowy sort of a shadow and that's just worked out really well. I'll go put a few stitches on his tail just to keep it held in place. Just go straight down the middle and back up. I was going to do quite a large sparrow, but then I was looking at them uh, feeding in my front little front garden, and um, I just wanted to do the, them sitting on the feeder, just like I see them. And so, that's what I'm going to do. I've actually got the shapes laid in now and so I'm happier to go ahead with the embroidery and all I've done is I've left this bit of grey sewing cotton here where the eye is because I feel that I'll outline just with the sewing cotton so I've just left it there for now. So I'm just going to lay some straight stitches in to show the different colours of his head and so I need I need this lovely dark grey through and then I'll put some lighter on but I don't want to cover up all of the fabric I want the fabric to be able to be shown 
especially here where the lovely marks are. And this type of embroidery, it's not about trying to get some detailed um, look of something like I was with the starling or my blue titch in my original book. It's all about getting a flavour of the bird, a, sort of a sense of it really. And hopefully it's simple stitches but ends up just looking so pretty. I'm going to take these down over the breast a bit. I can I can lay in the feathers but again I don't want to ruin this lovely bit of cloth. I think I need to change to a to a bit of a paler colour. Just put a few in here. I really like this already. So many different styles of embroidery you can choose to do. There's no need to limit yourself to one thing or another. I really like doing everything. I nearly thought I'd do the wing as a separate piece but I could easily have just embroidered that wing, cut it out and then put it on as a proper 3D piece. But my, my book's already quite thick because of the nest and the stump work of Blackbird so I thought maybe I'd better keep it a little bit flat. managed to get some of the nice pale stitches in for this pale grey and I'm going to work down the breast a bit. I need, definitely need some more dark ones on but at the moment I'm just going to work my way down the breast with a few stitches just to give the sense of the where the feather highlights are. This is quite fine wool. This is a very old vintage wool, so I've I've doubled it over in my in my needle. I really don't want to cover up this lovely fabric. Put a few more on here to in a few different ways to just sort of indicate that it's a bit ruffly. And I'm just working back and forwards as I feel. I'm not necessarily doing them all in the same direction. I might come back down here with a very light one. That's coming on quite well, nicely. I think I'll just pull my needle and run it underneath a bit. I'll run it in the same direction, so if anything does show through, it'll just get camouflaged in. I've laid a few more darknesses there. I just need to come through with this really light grey and just put a few highlights. Well, it actually looks like white, which I don't know whether I'm that happy with. Um, we see. There's maybe not, mu not much more I can do until I lay the eye in the beak in, so 
and maybe that that's the next thing I do. Actually it doesn't look so bad now, I've got a few of them in. It just looked very white when I put that first stitch in. I haven't quite got the shape of this patch correct, so I'm going to take the I'm going to take this grey right in over the orange and just shape this cheek patch a bit more. But so far so good actually. It's quite small that I'm doing him. If I'd just done him on the page, he could have been a really nice size, but once I had the idea of having him on the bird feeder, that's what I wanted to do. I think maybe that's it. I have searched high and low for a black button that was small enough and I had a beauty but it was a, a giant one and I've actually found a bead and it's sort of got a bit of a greeny hue to it but I think it's going to work and if it doesn't then I will just touch it with a bit of acrylic paint to make it matte if it doesn't if it doesn't look right. So I'm just going to put this on here and just see if it's the right sort of a size. Actually, I think that that's definitely going to be fine. I'm quite pleased with that. And I'm going to use this same thread to um, stitch in the beak. I'm just going to outline it first. and hopefully start and embroider it in. I'll finish what's in my what's in my needle before I go around the eye again. So I'm just going to try and make a sense of the bibbidi's throat. I haven't put any black material down because the black just seemed too black so I'm just going to fill this in with stitches. There's actually a bit of yellow or a bit of like pale brown under his beak so it'd be nice to get that on. But at the minute I'll just I'll just quickly get this in. It sort of comes back over here. Oh, all of a sudden it's just it's just appearing. I hope I don't regret doing him so little. I feel as if I want to do a great big one now. I need some of these black stitches to be going around his eye so I'll just take them down in underneath the bead and just get them going through here just a tiny little bit he's got a little bit of a grey eyebrow so I must remember to leave leave that showing And then the black stitches are going to come down towards his beak again, his black feathers. It's getting a little personality all of a sudden. I have just filled his beak in with this flower thread, but now the beak doesn't look like it's separated at all and I don't think I'm quite pleased with that. So I think I'll be going over that with a very black thread. Uh, this little patch here at the top 
is left for some pale yellow or pale brown but that's looking really nice now there and I just need to outline the eye maybe I should have sanded the back of the bead that might have been an idea but it's too late now Okay, I think, I think that's all going to be fine. Just going to lay in a tiny couple of very pale stitches here. And then I need the top of his beak as a highlight. I've put that bit of straw in there and then left it here because I need all these colours for the wing. And I've just threaded a bit of black silk and I'm just going to try and define the beak by going down with the absolute jet black well I don't know whether you're picking that up through the camera but it's made a difference to me from what I can see here I just can get that definition from the top to the bottom of his beak I think I would like this darker rusty colour to be coming up, up across the top of his eye a bit making sure that I leave his little grey eyebrow I was trying to preserve the pattern on the lovely fabric but in the end I always want to I always want to do the embroidery. It's hard to leave the fabric untouched, but I'm trying. In fact, I think that might, might just do it. I'm just going to give myself the best chance by just putting some lines on. So I do that now, I'll take them out of the way. Got a pencil here somewhere. Right, I think he needs there's a bit of a bit of a light bit comes through here. I'll just mark that on. I need to do that in the pale grey. And then his wing top wing feathers come down here like that. It's got a V shape going down there. And then the back wing comes here and the top wing has it has the nice stripes. I'll just give myself a couple of light and give myself a chance to do it. And so now I'm off and going. Now I'm not trying to totally embroider the whole thing, I'm just trying to make a sense of where the feathers are and where the colour changes. I think when I'm stitching I like to you I, I like to bring the whole thing together almost as a whole. So I like to go up and down and in and around everything and also like on this bit, I like all my colours to be working sort of at the same time. So at the moment, I've laid in that brown. Actually, I'd rather work with one of the other colours. So I'm just going to pull this here, where I think it'll be next, take my needle out and start with one of the other colours. Get this finished. So I'll need some more of that anyway. be better off down at the tail. I'll walk it down the tail, doing a bit more stitching while I'm on. Just 
lay it in with some nice long stitches. So marking these feathers. Splitting the stitch where I need to. I'm going to show the back wing first. Just putting the final few highlights through the bird's wing. Don't really need to do much on here I think. In fact that might just be it. I need to just put the highlight around the end of his top feathers and then I'll finish this piece off. I think he's turned into a little bit of a fat sparrow. I must be feeding him too well. I think I need to do a longer tail as well. I'll just put some darker, darker stitches on here. I need to put a little, a little triangle of grey here. And I think I'll call his wings done grey in there and move on to the bird feeder. Well, I've cut out the pieces out of the backpack knitting and I think it's going to work really well. So I've got two layers because one layer just well, it wasn't enough really. So I'm going to put both of these layers on. So this is my top layer. And tack the net in. I definitely don't want them to be on top of each other properly. So I want it to be, I want the holes to be smaller. So that's why I'm using a double layer. In fact, I won't need to tack the under one down because it'll get. It'll be kept in by the top layer. Actually, my hoop is only just fixed on to give me enough enough um, space to stitch on. I've cut a piece of the cord off this um, tie thing and I've just run the ends through a flame just to melt them so that they don't fray and I'm going to uh, just couch it down over here actually I'll go through it to make the rim of the bird feeder just going to not couch it exactly as hide my stitches within it. Well, I've put the I've put the black line in for the edge of the feeder with some stem stitch and I decided that I did want to try and put the seeds in. So I've got a double thread of my cruel wool in the needle and I'm literally doing seed stitch which is very appropriate. And so I'm doing single little lines for the seeds and I've taken the same Cruel wool, but the yellow and a double thread, 
and I've done double stitches here to signify the corn and probably I'll do another stitch in maybe a brown to just show different types of seeds but I think most of them will be this and I'm occasionally doing a French knot as well just every so often and I'm just randomly going to work around and about I might not need to totally cover all my green fabric because it might just look nice as it is if I do need to totally cover it I'll totally cover it, it doesn't really matter so I will just keep on, I imagine this is going to take me a while so I'll not be filming this whole thing but once I've done this, the only thing I've then got left to do is put the bird's legs in. Or at least one foot anyway. And just tack this down again. Where I haven't tacked it. So, I'm just going to carry on doing this seed stitch. Um, I'm trying not to pull it too tight. So they just, you can see the separate threads which makes it look like, that makes it look more like seeds actually. But I'll just try and random them out so they fade away up the page. I'm going to carry on filling as much or as little of this as I need to. And I'll show you when I'm finished. I've almost finished my embroidery and I wanted to add the perch that the birds come down to on the bird feeder. So what I've done is I've just cut out a little bit of cardboard in the shape of the little silver thing that sticks out. And I have some silver thread here. Um, it's just quite nice silver thread. And what I'm going to, what I thought I'd do instead of um, just embroidering the perch on is I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of glue on here that just helps the thread to stay on and I'm going to wrap the cardboard in the silver thread so that glue is just going to help that stay on which gives me a chance and I'm going to start and wrap it and I think what I'll do is I'll just wrap an initial an initial layer all the way down and then I'll come back up and make sure it's all covered and then once it is I'll stitch it into position and it'll just give it that extra little bit of relief that the flat stitching wouldn't do and as soon as I've got it full up, I'm going to take the thread end and then sew it onto the, onto the embroidery. And that will be my finishing, my finishing thing. I'll make it as neat as I can. I'll show you what it looks like so far. needing to do this in my hand but I've already I've already done one pass with the thread so I've put it where I wanted it to be I'm just going to sort of put the edge under where I've put the wool work and I don't want my stitches to be visible so I'm just sort of going in behind so I am tacking it down but I'm hiding those stitches at the same time I'm just making sure that I'm holding it all in while that thread tightens up around it and coming up from right underneath the edge. I don't want to sew through the cardboard. I just want the cardboard to be attached. This is the last thing to do. And then my little house sparrow on a bird feeder portrait 
is finished. I'm just trying to lay the stitches nice and in with all the rest of the wraps. I'm going to make that the last stitch, I think. Turn over and finish it off. So the back of mine, well, there it is. You can see the back of it. It's not too bad. And here's the finish. So my sparrow and a bird feeder. Looking just like the sparrows in my front garden. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm over the moon with it. I've got him here. I absolutely love the way the little perch just made it in the end and makes it into such a lovely image. And I love the way the fabrics went in with the perfect colour. And I even love the way I did all the little stitching. It's so simple, just straight stitches with a double length of wool. Nothing complicated at all. Um, I hope you have a try of that. I really am going to try and find out how I can do some PDFs of these designs because it would be lovely to think that someone else could take this image of the birds outside my front window and be stitching it too. There's going to be uh, one or two of my other projects coming up in the in the next week or so and then I'll be on to my uh, flower and bird book again. I'm so pleased you're all enjoying them and thank you very much for watching and thanks for subscribing, pressing the like button, sending super thanks, whatever you're doing it really helps me to keep going with it. Thank you very much indeed and bye from Marion's World. I will see you next time. Bye everyone, happy stitching.